Last Sunday, last Sunday, we started on a, uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a platform that I think was really critical because I submitted to you that, that as I began to share and the Holy Ghost began to deposit it, I was kind of interested going into it. I said, God, okay, so you're going to have me to minister a word by the Holy Ghost on singles, on living single, right? It's living single. And I said, well, Lord, you know, in the church, there's a whole lot of different people. There are folks that are single. There are folks that are married. And then there are folks that are, that, that are single and don't want to be bothered with marriage. And nobody say amen on that. Um, and, and so God, because there's a whole lot of different folks, how, how does this word, how does this word on single living, how does that impact the entire church? And God struck me so hard. He says, you, you got to grab this thing, son. Understand, the foundation of your life is not marriage. Your aspiration should not be to be married. The foundation of your life is not trying to find somebody else. The real foundation of your life is trying to find me inside of you and becoming everything you're supposed to be. He said, he said, before you just deal with the fact that, that dealing with singles, he said, take singles to the next level and understand that whenever God says you are called to be single, what he's really saying is you are called to be complete. And he says, when you are complete, it means you need no additions to be what you are supposed to be. And he says, part of the issue we're having is we got a whole lot of incomplete folk marrying a whole lot of incomplete folk trying to form a complete union, and it is a mess. And he says, understand something, whether you are married or single, you still must be complete. Because if you are incomplete in me, you will never have a complete marriage. If you won't have a complete marriage, you'll never have children that are walking in a complete lifestyle. And if you don't have children that are in complete lifestyles, then you're going to have a country, a world, a citizenship, a citizenship of folks that are struggling with who they are because they never saw a life of an individual that was complete in themselves, confident, anointed, and know they were on task. And he says, if you look in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible did God ever join somebody to another person when that person was trying trying around out here thirsty looking for somebody else. They were so focused on becoming who they were and God just brought the right person to them. And God says, stop seeking somebody else and find me and yourself. And so, and so for the last couple of weeks, and, and God is going to, I'm seeing this thing on single because I'm realizing that there's so, there's so much that is critical about our single life. Our divorces don't take place when we have issues in our marriage. Our divorces take place because our single foundation was broken. Our divorces take place because we didn't understand what it was to be complete, what it was to be self-confident, what it was to be in Christ. So what I'm going to make a promise to you today, that if you listen and you are attentive, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, that if you hear the word and you obey the word, you will have the benefits. It makes it real, real clear that you'll have benefits that are pressed down, shaking together, and overwhelming in your life. He says everything in your life will be benefited if you are willing and obedient, if you hear what you're going to receive through the word of God today, I am going to make a guarantee. It will eradicate any divorces in your future. It will fix your single life as godly foundational. And it will repair your marriage if it is going through brokenness. Wherever you are, the next few minutes are critical for what God has in store for your life. Are y'all ready for this? Yeah. Now I got to hear one more time. Are y'all really ready for this? Yeah. Are y'all really ready for this? Put up slide number one for me if you don't mind. Number one, understand that your single life is critical. In fact, understand this, that, that when we do single right, we set the foundation to do marriage right. You cannot have a successful marriage. You can't have a successful union. You can't date properly. You can't have children that are functional properly without a whole lot of hurdles if your single life is not right. My single life has to have godly priorities. So what I'm going to share with you in a minute is every single thing that the kingdom set up characteristic-wise for us to have before we ever say I do. So if you're right about to say I do, don't. <laughs> if you're thinking about it, hold up. If you're looking for it, don't look any further. Because what you're going to hear today will be the principles that will eradicate any future problems that you could incur by marrying either the wrong person or you yourself not being a complete person trying to join a union. Amen? So number one, it is the foundation of my life. Now understand something. You cannot, uh, how can I say it like this? In, in order to make life work, in the kingdom, there is a process. Say process. process. 
If you do not follow the process, you will not get the proper outcome. In fact, there is a recipe to making everything follow the steps and it ends deliciously. Ignoring or disobeying the steps will cause a mess. There is a recipe to making things work. There's a recipe. There's a recipe to making things good. There's a recipe to making things bad. There is a recipe. In fact, would you put up slide number two? Slide number two. Slide number two. Yeah. Um. Now, I had to ask God for grace as I was showing this. Uh, what you see here, I would consider to be probably the most perfectly made, artistically anointed cake one could ever see. Uh, if you would notice that on the exterior, you have Kit Kat bars. Everybody knows there's glory in Kit Kat bars. <laughs> on the top, there are M&Ms, but of multiple color M&Ms so that you don't get bored with just one particular color. On the inside, there is a layer, a layer of vanilla and icing that if you put all three of those things as you take a spoon and you scoop them out, there is a perfect crescendo of taste buds that begin to burst in your mouth all at one time. Do not leave the church. You got to listen to the message. You cannot run and try to find you a piece of cake. Amen. In, in other words, in other words, this doesn't happen by mistake. This doesn't happen by happenstance. In order to have a perfectly, artistically delicious cake, somebody had to follow the recipe to a max perfection. You can't get a perfect outcome without following the right directions. And what I'm seeing a lot of folks, they do, is they're trying to live a life as a single, but they don't have a recipe. And so they're trying to cook this. Put up slide number four, if you don't mind. Not the next one, but the one after that. Put the next one. That's what you end up with. Now go back to the first. Go back, go back to the previous one. Now go back to that one. Both of them have very similar, similar recipes. The problem is somebody didn't follow the recipe properly. If you don't follow the recipe of how to live your life as a kingdom citizen, you're going to end up with a mess. It doesn't just happen. You can't fall into a good life. You can't fall into a good marriage. You can't just have a good childhood. In order to make these things happen, you got to realize there is a recipe. In fact, stay here and go to my screen. Oh, I can change that right there. Stay here. In fact, look at what baby girl, read what the Bible says. Stay here, stay here. Read what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 8, 6. Watch this, watch this. For there, for there, for there is a proper time. A proper what? Time. A proper what? Time. Go okay, ahead. And procedure. Uh-huh. For every matter. Go ahead and read the good news translation, baby girl. There is a right time. Uh-huh. And a right way uh -huh. to do everything. Uh -huh. So now watch this. So he's making it real clear. There's a right way to do it. If you're not doing it the right way, you're going to have these results in your life. If you're not doing it the right way, you're going to end up with results that you don't like. If you're, listen, listen. If you don't do it the right way, go to slide, the next slide. You'll end up trying to make macaroni and cheese, and this is what you end up with. Bon Appetit, anybody? Why does this happen? Because you didn't follow the recipe. If you don't know the recipe to being a kingdom citizen, to being a kingdom citizen, to be a kingdom single, to being a kingdom married, to be a kingdom young adult, if you don't know the right recipe, you will end up with a mess. Now, let me just tell you something. If you're sitting at home and somebody texts you and tells you, hey, listen, can you come over for dinner? I just made some macaroni and cheese. And you're thinking about, oh, that's going to be so good. You know, your mouth is rotting. You are, my mouth is watering. You are ready for some mac and cheese. You are, re you are, you are ready for some mac and cheese. And then they send you a picture of what you're coming for. How many people will say, you know what, I'm busy tonight? Why? Because they didn't follow the recipe. 
In fact, baby girl, would you please read Ecclesiastes now eight and, six, and go to the right one. Go to the next macaroni and cheese. That's, this is what it's supposed to look like. That's, that's it, yeah. You see how the crust is getting? Now, this is a little, I like this because it's got the little breadcrumbs on top. Y'all feel my spirit? Got a little basil on there, Shaba. Y'all feeling my spirit on that thing? Now, now let me ask you a question. Which, which macaroni and cheese are you quicker to move toward? Go to the previous one or go to the next one? The only difference is they both have the very similar ingredients, but somebody didn't follow the recipe. So why are you marrying people? Go back to the next one. Go back to the previous one. Why are you marrying people whose lives look like that? No, no. Why are you marrying somebody? Go back to the, to the chocolate cake. Go back to the cake. Go back to the cake. Go back. Why are you marrying somebody whose lifestyle looks like that? That's what their finances look like. That's what their lifestyle looks like. That's what their emotions look like. And that you're lining up because they didn't know how to follow the kingdom recipe in order to be successful in the kingdom of God. In fact, baby girl, read Ecclesiastes 8, chapter 6. For there is a proper time. Say time. Listen to me carefully. For those of you that are considering marriage, listen to me. You can do the right thing in the wrong time and it's still the wrong thing. You can find the right person and say, we're going to be married, but you do it in the wrong time and you still end up in a mess. You ever, you ever bake the cake? You ever, anybody ever bake the cake? What do you do when you bake a cake? You put your flour in, you get your eggs in, you put your butter in, you put the cake mix. I'm old school, I don't, I don't you know. And, and so you put all of that together and then you blend it up, right? Isn't that, isn't that right? Do you put the icing in at this point? No. Why not? You don't put the How about the fact you want to make a birthday cake? Do you put the candles in the mixture before you cook it? No. Why? It's the right thing. But it's the wrong time. You want to get married, you want to have a relationship, you want to have a good time, you want to live your life right, and you're good, but your stuff is not right. Your credit don't look like it's marriable yet. Your attitude doesn't look like it's marriable yet. Yes, the two of you are supposed to be together, but you're not ready yet. Doing the right thing at the wrong time is still, my wife and I, my wife and I dated for seven years. You know how we dated for seven years? It was the right thing. She was my sha -na, na I was her man. That was easy. When I first saw her, I looked and said, that's it right there. There was no question. There was no pontification. I didn't need anybody to share with me. I knew when I saw her, the heavens begin to part. The clouds begin to recede. The sun began to permeate down and beat upon my face. And I saw the Spirit of the Lord come upon me as a dove and said, My dear son, this is the one that you are to marry. And I will be well pleased. I saw all of that, but it still that took me seven years. so extra. It is just, <laughs> it's just so extra. You, you didn't, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You, you didn't have that experience either? You didn't have that experience too? I, I did. Amen. Oh, okay. I thought. <laughs> Amen. I just want to make sure we were seeing the same thing. Amen. Just feeling the spirit of God on that. Even though that happened, it still took us seven years to be able to get it together. Because both of us, it was right. We were right for each other. But the timing was bad. There were still things we need to accomplish as a single, complete person that would help us to have a marriage that was complete in Christ. And had we not allowed the foundation to be properly built, it would have crushed the house. That's why the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Do not be so thirsty that you are waiting for somebody to come in your life and you're not building a proper foundation. I know I ain't got nobody shouting, but I know I'm right. And I need you all to help me. Listen to me. Stop badgering these singles about when you're going to get married, when you're going to find a man. You 28, you 48, you 58. I still ain't found them yet. I ain't ready and I'm happy like I am. Leave them alone. And stop feeling you are inadequate because you ain't got somebody on your side. Listen, sometimes you can put somebody on your side and you want to cut your side off because they are irking your last nerve. Stop badgering them. Let them take their time. God has a process for them. Let them do their process and leave them folk alone. 
Maybe they're supposed to build some buildings before they find somebody else. Maybe they're supposed to go into some vineyards and build some and, and, and plant some seeds before whatever God has for them, let them be what they're supposed to be and lead them folk alone. And stop sitting there and say, I wish I had somebody. Love yourself so much. That, 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 that just like Ruth, Ruth was in the garden just going ahead and sowing and sowing. She was going ahead and sowing and plucking. So she, she didn't even notice that, that, that warm Boaz was hovering around her. She didn't even know. She didn't even know. She didn't even know that Boaz was there. In the Bible, the Bible says that, that God brought Eve to Adam. Adam never sought Eve. Eve never sought Adam. They were just brought together because both of them were functioning according to their purpose. You should not look for a mate. Look for your purpose, and the person that connects to your purpose will find you working where you're supposed to work. If you are, listen, that's why you don't go to a club looking for somebody. Because wherever I find you, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a tip-off of what our life is going to look like. So if I find you in a club, that means I got to chase you all your life. The devil is a liar. I am not chasing you. You notice how half the people didn't say nothing? I get it. It's all good. I know, I know that some of y'all, you're struggling because, because I'm telling you, where I find you has a lot to do. So, so if I find you in the library, I know you got a mind. We may study together. If I find you at the grocery store, we may go shopping together. If I find you in the club, I ain't going clubbing together. The devil is a liar. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you, leave them alone. Let them be everything God has for them and focus on yourself. In fact, read, read, read again Ecclesiastes. This is for every person that somebody's, when you gonna get married, and you got siblings, and they all got married, and they're looking at you, when you gonna get married? When I'm ready. When you get married? When God finishes working on him, then I'll get married. He ain't ready yet. Who is he? I don't know him yet. That's why he ain't married yet. And when God finishes, he ain't finished cooking yet. The worst thing to do is take out the apple pie before it finished cooking. The devil is alive. Why? Because it don't taste good. He's still baking, baby. Let him cook. Come on, baby girl. I just want you to read this one scripture because I'm going to lay some, some foundation and then we're going to pick it up later on. Read this real quick, 8-6. I'm going to give you something that is going to be so significant to your life because I'm going to tell you in the Garden of Eden what God designed that every complete person was to have before they even considered a marriage. And if you don't have all of these, then it's not time yet. If you've not developed all of these, it ain't right yet. If you've not developed all of these, stop looking and start becoming. So, so before we do that, so, so no, read this again in an amplified version. For there is a proper time. Proper time. And procedure. And a way of getting it done. For every delight. So if you want to have a delightful life, there's a time and there is a procedure. Anything you do, find God's timing and God's procedure. Let me say it again. Anything you want to do, find God's timing and God's procedure. Keep going, beautiful. For um, though the, mankind's misery uh -huh. and trouble lies heavily upon you. Because, hold on, hold on now. He, he's going to show you something. He said there's a, there's a time. Say time. This side say time. And this time, side so say, say procedure. Okay, there's a proper what? And a proper what? There's a proper what? And a proper what? Now, this side, I'm going to be with you in just a minute, but there's a proper what? And a proper what? There's a proper what? And a proper what? Okay, read the next part, baby girl. Whom rebels against the king. No, no, go back. Though mankind's, though mankind's, huh? Though, oh, man, though mankind's like. misery and trouble. So, so say one more time. Though mankind's what? Misery uh -huh. and trouble uh -huh. lies heavily upon him. Uh-huh. Because? Who rebels against the king. Now watch what he's saying because it's important. There's a proper what? Time. And a proper what? If you do not follow the proper and you do not follow the proper, you will end up with misery. So if you don't do it God's timing and you don't do it God's way, you end up miserable. But I want to do it my way. Join misery. I got my own way. I'll be miserable. No, there's a time. God says there's things that must be accomplished while you're still single because God says I'm making you complete. 
There's a time. Well, no, I want to do it my way. God says there's a procedure. There's a way of getting it done. That's why he says don't have sex before you marry. Procedure. See, I got three amens on that. I knew that was a problem right there. Why does God say not have sex before marriage? Not because God is a killjoy. Not because God doesn't want you to have fun. God doesn't want you to have sex before marriage because when you have sex with somebody, number one, your spirit's joined. So how many people are you going to join your spirit with this year? That means how many spirits are you going to have on the inside of you this year? All right, y'all don't want to talk to a preacher. The Bible says when you lay with a harlot, you absorb the spirit of a harlot. So if you don't lay with a harlot, an idiot, and a fool, what you got? Okay. <laughs> so, so, so God, God's not trying to stop you from having fun. God's trying to keep you from making soul ties with people that are going to hold you back and make you miserable. Because every time you have sex, you're making a soul tie. You think your body is actually having enjoyment, but what you're actually doing is connecting to somebody that if you don't have a divine relation with God, they're going to have an eternal hold on you and you don't even know it. It's proper time, proper procedure, or you'll be miserable. What's the timing? Procedure, so I don't become miserable. Go to the next one. So I'm going to show you this. And, and this is what I'm about to show you is, about, is worth a million dollars. What I'm about to show you is worth, I am going to show you, and I decided to do it this way so you would have it all in one list, and then as the day goes on, we're going to develop it. These are the critical principles that are necessary for every person before they say I do. And if you're married, and these principles that you're about to see are not within your heart, and living in your lifestyle, part of your lifestyle, then what I'm going to submit to you, you got to grow in the middle of your marriage so you don't ruin it. And ruin your family and ruin your children. Here we go. Before you ever consider saying I do, before you ever say these are the things that were established in the Garden of Eden before God ever brought man and woman together. Number one, the identity was determined in the relationship between them and the creator. God says, before you can get to somebody else, you got to know who you are. How can you give yourself to somebody and you don't know who you are? How can you give somebody something you don't have? You don't have a relationship with yourself. You don't know who you are. You don't know your purpose. You don't know your dreams. You don't know your gift. And he says, you're trying to give yourself and you're not even complete. So here's what you're doing. You're trying to complete yourself with somebody else. And what ends up happening was you then drain them. You then drain them because you came in incomplete. And you are looking for them to complete something that only God can complete. And so then you become miserable because without the source, you will be miserable. If you take a fish out of water, he will beat itself upon the earth and flip and flip. But he is dying because you have taken him out of his source. God says, listen, before you do anything, know who you are. What's your, why? Because if I know who I am, the wrong people won't come in and redefine me. And if I know who I am, I'm not going to struggle with my personality. If I know who I am, I'm going to be able to handle things because I know who my, 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 what my relationship is with God and I know who I am so I'm not struggling with me. Know who you are. The first thing God ever does when he sees anybody and he gives them identity. All through the Bible, when God met somebody, he wanted to change. Hey, Abram, Abram came to him. Abram was a mess. Abram couldn't have babies. Abram was a mess. He was messing up with other women. He had gotten the, 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 the bondswoman, his slave, to be his sex partner. They had a child out of wedlock. And God said, this ain't working, Abram. I'm going to have to change your name. So he changed his name from Abram to Abraham father of many nations because he says who you are is a mess I need to redefine and give you your identity let God give you your young man you are a man of God so therefore you pull your pants up because you have an identity young man you are a man of God so, so therefore you speak to women with character and integrity because you have an identity. Young man, know who you are. So when you see an older woman, you say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, because you know your identity. Young man, 
know who you are. You open doors for women. You protect women and not demean women. Why? Because you know that as a man, one of my objectives is to be a covering. I can't beat who I'm supposed to cover. I got to protect you, not wound you. But if you don't know who you are, you'll get your identity from the rappers, you'll get your identity from the world, and you'll think you're supposed to accumulate women rather than covering a woman. In fact, the Bible says when a man gets a wife, you know the first thing it says? He says you wash her with the word. Why? Because every woman you get has often been broken, has gone through pain, has gone through people that have mistreated them. And part of a husband's job is to take his wife and love her so much that whatever pain people put on her, he was able to wash it off her with the word of God. You keep saying, I want a finished product. God doesn't give you a finished product. He gives you Wonder Woman, but a seed. And he says, now you grow that seed, you birth that seed, you mature that seed, and then you'll have the plant that you desire. I need three people to grab that, y'all. Second thing, I don't mean to teach it right here, but I'm just going, second thing God gave man was a place. He gave him a place. He gave him his own place. All right, I knew I, knew I was going to have a problem right here. His place wasn't mama's basement. That ain't his place. That's mama's place. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. The next thing God says, I'm going to give you a place. I won't be able to teach it now. I'll go through it later on. He gave him a place. So don't look for anybody until you got a place. Don't look to get married until you got a place. Don't ask somebody to say I do until you got a place. And it can't be their place. It got to be your place. Okay, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all. Y'all quiet to the preacher this morning. I, I understand. I get it. I get it. That's just what the Bible He's First thing, you look, I, I, I'm, I'm going to just tell you what I'm going to tell you about later on. First thing God says, and the Bible says, and God took the man and put him in the garden. The word garden in the Bible means the spot. You got to have a spot. I'm going to take you to my mama's house later on. She leave around 10. So we can have a place to ourselves for about an hour and a half. Then my brother Jeffro will get there. What is that? Okay, y'all, I'm sorry. I'm just This is word, y'all. Y'all looking at me all funny. You gotta have, you got, that's, the Bible says you got to have a spot. You got to have your own spot. I'll go through the scriptures later on. They're coming up. I'll go through them later on. Next thing is you got to have self-esteem. You cannot get into a relationship with low self-esteem. God says, I've got to prepare your self-esteem before you're ever able to get into a relationship. Because all you do is get in a relationship, and every relationship, it'll be the same repetition. You'll get angry, and you'll drain them because they are not being everything you want them to be. You'll always feel as though somebody's mistreating you. You'll always feel as though you're being cheated on, and they're always, and you can be with the perfect person who's the perfect angel, but because you don't know yourself and you don't believe in yourself, you'll never think you're worthy. You need to understand you are worthy to be loved. Don't let nobody lie to you. You are worthy to be loved. You may not be as perfect as everybody else thinks you want to be perfect. You are perfect in God's sight. His sight is the only sight that matters. And the Bible says you are the apple of his eye. And if they don't see it, it's their ignorance, not yours. You are, sometimes you just need to know you are worthy. Because when you know you're worthy... In fact, let me, let me see. Hold up. I, I had, let me go. I want to, I want to go here. Uh, um, go to number 13, please. Go to number 13. I'm, I'm going to teach this later, but go to number 13. The more you love yourself, the less nonsense you will tolerate. You keep tolerating all that nonsense because you don't love you. The moment you know who you are, you love yourself, you realize I'm too good to be in that mess with you. The Bible says do not give your pearls before swine. Why are you hanging with pork? Why are you hanging with swine? Why are you hanging with people that cannot appreciate who you are? It's not their fault. Swine going to be swine. But you ought to know who you are. 
When you know who you are, you will not tolerate somebody mistreating you. When you know who you are, you will not tolerate somebody lying to you. When you know who you are, you are not tolerating being somebody's second best. Well, I'm, he said him and his wife are having problems, so I'm just going to wait. Baby girl, you got a self-esteem issue. If you don't realize that you're worth being somebody's number one, if, if you haven't, if, and if you got a jack, somebody else's husband because you can't find your own it means you got to look within yourself and say you don't understand who you are why would you take somebody else's hand be down you want to know I was at New York I was in New York and we were walking down the street and I saw this really nice MCM book bag and I said I really want to get that and my son uh, 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 tapped me on the shoulder about a year a couple years ago and he says dad you realize that's a fake he said, that's a knockoff. I said, that's an MCM bag. I can get an MCM bag for $20. He said, Dad, that's a fake and a phony. Why would you buy a fake and a phony? He says, do you know the moment you get home and you start rubbing on it, it's only going to have one M? Why? Because the value of it is determined by who makes it. Why would you give yourself to somebody when you are a daughter of God, a child and a citizen of the kingdom, and you keep selling yourself to people who do not recognize your value? Man of God, you keep letting her yo-yo you, up and down, yo-yo you, yo-yo you, yo-yo you, because you are so loved, because you have a relationship with her, your body fell in love with her, but you're really operating by lust, and man of God, you're trying to figure out how is it going to take for me to get her. Recognize who you are. Why are you somebody's seconds, or thirds, or fourths? You, don't, don't you know who you are? When you know your identity, you will not sell yourself cheaply. I got to go. I got to teach it later on. I'm, I'm going to develop this later on. Number four, sit down. I'm just, I just want you to go home and pray on these things. Number four, the fourth thing that God did before he ever brought a man to a woman is he gave them the ability to control their flesh and emotions and tell themselves no. You're going to hear this later. I'm going to explain it, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. If you can't say no to yourself, you will never be qualified to have somebody else join your life. You have to be able to say no to yourself and no to your emotions. You have to listen to me, child of God, all these saints in the house. Y'all got the power of God. Y'all falling out. Y'all running the house. Y'all shouting. Y'all tripping. But you still can't control your mouth. You got to be able to know how to turn your mouth off. I'm, I'm trying to help all I say, because we, we got the Holy Ghost. You mean the Holy Ghost going to make you jump but can't make you shut up? The Holy Ghost can't control your eyes so you stop rolling your eyes and cutting people? The Holy Ghost can't make you say hello and love somebody that's been irking? You really don't know who the Holy Ghost is yet. Develop a relationship with him. Because the whole, let me tell you, when you really know the Holy Ghost, you're going to go through a season when you start talking to yourself. No, no, when you really, when you really, you're going to say, because no, the Holy Ghost say, show him love, and your flesh is going to say, no. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost will say, they're a child of God, and your flesh is going to say, but I don't like them. <laughs> and you're going to be sitting there like this, and I don't know, and, they're gonna, and, and, and the Holy Ghost, and who's going to win that battle? It tells me everything about your level of maturity. <laughs> yeah, your emotions? You're still getting upset like that? Can't control your mouth? You're angrily easy? God has too much in store for you. Don't, don't let your biggest hurdle be yourself. Can you control your, listen, I got to, you don't know how, I'm saying no to myself all the time. Go back to number two real quick. Go back to number two. Do you know how much I got to say no? Doth thou not understandeth? <laughs> I got to say no to myself all the time.
But I realized my ability to say no to me gives God the opportunity to say yes to me. I cannot let my desire ruin my future. And until you're able to control your desire, don't ask anybody to engage you in a relationship. Because if your desire speaks louder than your actions, then you are not ready for anyone yet. God's still working on you. He's still maturing you. He's still, you got to say, listen, you know how hard it is? Let me tell you, that's the I picked this out on purpose. Baby girl, I picked this out on purpose. Because you know what I said? In another life. I, no, no, this is what I was saying. I was saying to myself, in heaven, this is what we ought to be able to eat. When we get to heaven, this is what God, this is no calories, no sugar, no fat, no issues. The Lord just gives you this and it doesn't affect your body. Somebody say glory. But until then, I got to tell myself no. I got to tell myself I can't. And, and what I know me, I can't, because simply say, everything in moderation. No. Because I know me. Let me give you the rest. There's some things you can't do in moderation. There's some things you just can't, you can't do, you can't flirt in moderation. You got to be able to tell yourself, no. No. No, really, you got to be able to tell yourself, no, you got to be, because if not, you'll ruin your, do you know how many people have lived their life with regret because they didn't say no, and the thing they said yes about, they regret so much. It was never worth it. How many men have ruined their lives because they just couldn't say no for one night? Or even worse, they had a long-term relationship that they knew was not godly and they knew was wrong. And they thought they got away with it. Please know the Bible says whatever is done in dark. And so now you got to, so what the devil want to do is he want to torment you. So what he want to do, he wanted you to always be looking over your shoulders knowing that because he did, the Bible says beware, your sin will find you out. So the devil wanted to torment you and then, and then set you up for an epic fail in front of everyone. You know what I mean? Men have, people, people have regretted have regretted not saying no? Child of God, before you connect to anybody, be able. Paul, Paul said it the best. Paul says, Paul said, Paul, Paul wrote three quarters of the New Testament. Paul, Paul was one of the greatest authors God ever gave the revelations to. And the Bible says that Paul himself said, I've got to buff it, beat my flesh daily so that I will not be disqualified from what God told me to write. Don't let you stop you from being everything that you are supposed to be. But, but, but it's just one night, one night, one night, and they start singing songs to make you feel like you, let me hold you tight. If only for one night, let me keep you near, ease away the fear. Night, only for one night, yeah, yeah, one night. But what they don't do is flip it and say, the next thing you got, I bust the windows out your... See, see, they don't tell you that's the next song that comes up on the track. They don't tell you that. They keep Boy, you on one side. Right. I'm just being, they only keep you on one side. They don't let you know. And there you are, drive, you got to drive up to mama's house with no windows. Got dents all in the car. And mama like, been messing with that girl again. Because mama always know. Mama know, mama know what a car looked that been beat up by another. I'm just saying. Got to be able to tell yourself no. You got to be able to say no. 
And then finally, we'll deal with it later on. In fact, I might develop this next week. Never get married if you are not already involved in the usage of your gifts and talents. Um, let me see if I got that there. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So Paul says something real, real wild. Baby girl, I don't know if you're able to get to, uh, yeah. I'm going to end right here. Baby girl, would you go to 1 Corinthians? I don't, I don't know which slide that is. First, let, let, me, let me tell you, for those of you that are ready and you're excited and you want to get married, Paul, Paul just gave a little advice from an older man. And he's going to start off by telling you, this is interesting because I've never seen this in the Bible. I've never seen this in the Bible. I think David may have done it one time, but I've got to go follow that up. This is the first time in the Bible that somebody actually said, you know what, what I'm going to tell you ain't from God. This is just how I feel about it. And ironically, the subject is on marriage. Paul says, what I'm going to tell you ain't from God. God ain't give me this. This is how I feel. So I want to already preface this that what you're getting ready to hear ain't necessarily the Holy Ghost. It's Paul. Now watch what Paul says, baby girl. Read this. Now concerning what you wrote about unmarried people. I do not have a command from the Lord. So the Lord ain't necessarily telling me this, but here's why she is. But, but I give my opinion. I have a feeling about this. What's your opinion, Paul? As one by the Lord's mercy uh -huh. is worthy of trust. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Here's my opinion. Considering the present distress, uh -huh. I think it is better uh -huh. for a man to stay as he is. Yeah, go ahead, baby girl. Do you have a wife? Then don't try to get rid of her. <laughs> That's what Paul said. Keep going, beautiful. Are you unmarried? Uh huh. Then don't look for a wife. Hold but on, stop, I... stop, 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 stop. <laughs> this is messing y'all up, ain't it? This is what the word says. Now, Paul says, I'm giving you my opinion. It's how I feel about it. It's what I think. Go ahead, baby girl. I'm explain and he's going to explain why. Keep going, baby girl. But uh -huh. I would rather spare you uh -huh. the everyday troubles Ooh. that married people will have. Hold up. <laughs> Let it marinate. <laughs> I want to get married tomorrow. Hold up. Wait a minute. Paul's opinion says... Just give it a minute. Keep going, baby girl. I would like you to be free from worry. Uh-huh. An unmarried man. Uh -huh. An unmarried man. Concerns himself. Uh-huh. With the Lord's work. Uh-huh. Because he is trying to please the Lord. Stop. Listen to me carefully because you got to understand this principle. And I will have to develop this between this week and next week later on. If you are not married... God is not telling you don't get married. Paul says he don't want to. He's not sure how it's going to work out. But, but God is not telling you not to get married. Paul says that's his opinion. Got to know your scripture. Got to know context, pretext, and posttext. But what Paul is saying is, watch this last part, because this, this last part is critical. He says if you are married, you are considered to have to focus on the things of God. If you are not married, your entire life can focus on developing your gifts and talents. Before you get married, before you say I do, before you buy the dress, before you get the cake, before you go to the caterer, before you go ahead and get them little two people to sit on the top of it, to melt in the middle of the wedding, before you do any of that, he says develop your gifts and talents. Take your gifts and your talents into the union because when you get into the union see when you're married when you're single everything is focused on you and God I can develop my purpose I can develop my I can stay up all night and study I can prepare myself I can take as many classes as I want I can, can but when the Bible says you get married now I've got to divide myself 
Because now I got to take care of God and a wife. And so now, if I'm taking care of God and I'm taking care of a wife, guess who gets to be third? Me. Then I get children, I'm fourth. And he says, before you do that, develop your gifts so that when you get into marriage, you will have already taken care of that portion of your life. And you don't have to go. You don't want to be married during a discovery season. Don't try to get married and then discover yourself. Discover yourself. Know yourself. Develop yourself. And don't put a time limit on it. Don't say I'm 46 and I'm 38 and I'm 62. Don't do it. Just discover yourself. Because if, you if, you, if, if you're 60 and you got 40 years left, them 40 years you got will be glorified because you took your time. Or if you're 20 and you got and you got 80 years left, you're gonna have 80 years of earthly hell. Because you didn't take your time. You bring into that marriage, I know who I am, I know where I'm going, I got a spot. I have self-esteem. I know my gifts, I know my talents, I know my purpose. Now, I, now also what I've done is I've now set the marker for who I'm looking for. Because I don't want to be unequally yoked. So now I know who I am, so now I know what I'm supposed to get. So when the wrong thing comes in, go back to slide number 13, go back to slide number 13, go back to slide number 13. I won't tolerate a mess because I know who I am. Come on, y'all, I got to stand up. I got to develop this later on. Stand up and give God a hand clap. Got a lot to give. Come on, we, got, we, we, ain't, even, we ain't even scratched the surface yet. Come on, clap your hands and give God glory. Uh, come on, clap your hands and give God glory. I, I just want to ask a question. I just want to ask a question. Can you please kindly go to slide number two? And slide number four. Slide number two. And slide number four. What are you making of your life? What are you making? Are you following the recipe? What are you, what are you making of your life? Are you following the recipe? What does your life look? Go to slide number two. I'll just throw that one in there. I, I, like, I like, go to slide number three. I haven't done three yet. Do three. What are you making of your life? Go to slide number five. You want some mac and cheese? Or go to slide number six with the breadcrumbs on top. That's some glory on that. What recipe are you following? Go to the previous one. Are you following Uncle Fester's recipe? <laughs> he had a mess of a life. This is what his life looked like. Are you following that recipe? Are you following your own recipe? Is this, is this, is this your own recipe? You decided you were going to make it up as you went. I was watching somebody, my kids show, showed me a video where a guy was, was, was washing his chicken. And he was fussed at, I guess, on a previous uh, time for not, not making sure the chicken was clean. So he took dish detergent and started washing his chicken with who are you following? Where are you getting your recipe for your life? Because great marriages don't happen by happenstance. You don't fall into it. Success doesn't happen by happenstance. You don't fall into it. You are following a recipe. What kind of recipe are you following? Where did you get your recipe? What is your life going to look like? Because the way that you follow the directions will significantly impact what it turns out to be. That's all I'm going to ask. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I have your incredible citizens that are in this room that are achievers. They are people that are going to the next level because they are next level kingdom citizens with a purpose and gifts. And I ask you right now, in the name of Lord Jesus, Father, prepare them. Prepare them to be everything they're supposed to be. 
Not making marriage their goal, but completeness their goal. That they will be, they will be complete, single-eyed individuals who are talented and tenacious about their talent. That they will develop in such a way, dear Lord, that their gifts will make room for them and bring them honor before great people. Let them be focused on who they're becoming and not becoming something that somebody else showed them that is faulty. And I ask you right now, Father, all the people that are in their future that Satan has sent, reveal it to them. Reveal to them people, wolves that are in sheep's clothing and demons that are disguised as angels. Show them, show them, show them the holes the pitfalls that lay in wait in front of them so they will avoid them. Don't let them have to live a life of regret, but let them live a life of wisdom. I ask you, Father, right now in the name of Lord Jesus, they will not accumulate multiple relationships, but they will build a relationship with you and with themselves. And then at the right time, Father, they will find another complete person who will help them form a complete union and the two can be one flesh. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray. Everybody who loves my Jesus, clap your hands and give God glory. My time is up, Christian people. But I got a deal for you. I got a, I got a deal for you. My deal starts with a relationship with a God that loves you who says, listen, I'm going to give you more than you can ever give me. I'm going to help you more than you could ever help me. And I'm going to be there for you in ways you could never be there for me. The deal is not fair. Because what I offer is nothing in comparison to what he offers. So I get the best part of it. The only mistake I could ever make is not taking the deal. The only mistake I could ever make is not taking the deal. So every head by, every eye closed, you're up in this camp and you say, you know what, God? I don't want to walk out of here and not get all of you. You have more in store for me. And I don't want to miss it because I have not given you my all. So let's just be straight up, y'all. Let's just be straight up. You can't be real in church. You can't be real anywhere. You up in this camp and you say, you know what, God? You got more. You have more in store for me. And I, I need to give you, I need to give you all of me so I can have all of you. You've been holding a little bit back. You're not the only one. All of us have held something back from God. All of us have had a door in our heart that we haven't necessarily opened up. Everybody has had to open up some areas in their life that they tried to hold on to, some things that they didn't want to change. But I find out the greater the opportunity that you give God to change you, the better your path is. You're in this room and you say, you know what, Lord? I need a better, a better, a better better, stronger, more authentic relationship with you and your word and your principles. If I'm speaking to you and that is your revelation, I need a better relationship with you, your word, and your principles. When I count to three with boldness, as though you are walking into your future without anyone having the power to stop you. If that's you, and you say, I want a better relationship with God, I need more of you because I know if I give you all of me, I get the best part of that deal. You're in this room and you need to give God all of you. You need a better relation. When I count to three with boldness, lift your hands up. One, two, three. Lift your hand up. See how easy that is? Yeah, it's really easy. Yeah, see? Yeah. Yeah, I need more of you, God. I need, I need a better relation with you. You just, yeah, that's it. You just put your hand up. See, that's a good thing. Nobody has a heaven or hell to put you in. It's between you and God. As your hand is lifted, you're in this room and you say, you know what, God, I've been hurt. Somebody didn't do me right, and I got to forgive them so I can have my life back. You're in this room and somebody lied to you, lied on you, misrepresented you, and you say, you know what, God, 
in order for me to go to the next level, I've got to take a bold step. Did you know all through the Bible, whenever God was getting ready to bless somebody, there was always a bold step. Before Jesus could ever enter into ministry, he had to take a bold step to allow John the Baptist to baptize him in the water. There's always a bold step. Before Elisha could receive a double portion of anointing, he had to follow the old prophet and not walk away. He had to make a bold move. You cannot go to the next level without first starting out with a bold step. Because a bold step tells you and tells the world, I could care less about your opinions. God has too much in store for me to let anyone hold me back. You're in this room and somebody lied to you, lied on you, misrepresented you. And you need to forgive them so you can have your life back. If you're in this room and you got to forgive somebody to hurt you, when I count to three, you lift your hands up. One, two, three, lift your hands up. They did me wrong. Yeah, see how easy that is? Yeah, see how easy that is? It's that easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your hands. Finally, you're in this room and you've been visiting, 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 visiting. Co-pastor always says, if you visited three times, you're already a member. You've been visiting and hanging out and hanging out and visiting and hanging out and hanging out and visiting. And you want to be a part of this camp. You want to be a part of this church. Because you want to be a part of a church that's authentic, that's real, that's not here to steal people's money, but that's here to love up on God's people and provide as much as it can for its community and the kingdom. You want to be a part of that kind of church. You want to be a part of a church that's got a lot of nonsense, a lot of politics. We were with a politician this week, and they said, well, you know, there's always politics in church. And we said, no, 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 no. There's no politics in church. This is a kingdom church. We don't play games. We love God, we honor God, and we do it right. We serve God. Don't play that game. Ain't nobody fighting for any positions. Ain't nobody backbiting to get to a place. All of us are kingdom citizens. All of us trying to get closer to Christ. So you want to be a part of an authentic, real church that just loves God. Not a perfect church. We got a lot of stuff we're working through. God's got grace on us. But I'm going to tell you straight up, I'd rather be hanging out with the cats in this camp than not. You want to be a part of this church. You want to be a part of this place. You want to connect to these, camp, these folks. When I count to three, you lift your hand up. One, two, three. Lift your hand up. I want to join. I want to be a part. Very good. Very good. I see your hands. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Oh, and you need prayer. You say, God, I need some things in my life change. If that's you, when I count to three, you lift your hand up. One, two, three. Lift your hand up. I need prayer. If your hand is lifted for any reason, for any of those, I need you to run. We got 20 seconds left in church service. Can you join me down here for the next 10? Join me down here for the next 10. If your hand was lifted for any reason, join me. And we're going to clap because great people are getting ready to make great moves. Hey, son. Welcome home, son. God bless you, son. God bless you. me and I, I, I like to be a blessing. Who is here and you drove at least 45 minutes to an hour to get here and you are in this room? If that's you, lift your hand up. You drove, How far did you drive? From southern Mer how, how, what, how, how, how long? An hour and a half? Come here, baby. Come here, precious. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you for blessing them. This, I want to, Catherine, Want, bless me and I want to bless you with what she said and we want to pay for your gas for coming down here okay God love you we're so honored you are here God's grace on your life God's grace on your life God bless you God grace that's because is anybody else that drove an hour 
to get here, anybody else that drove an hour to get here, don't make up an hour and say, well, I stopped by Krispy Kreme and all of that. You actually drove from here an hour. Huh? Who is that? In the back. Where is, where is that? By the balloon? Okay. I can't see you. I can't see you. Oh, bless you, baby. You drove an hour to get here? Okay. Would you mind... Digging stand, would you mind giving this to my sister? How, 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 what's your drive exactly? Glenn Bernie, I know that's right. Give her a hand clap. Now may God bless you a hundredfold for sowing into God's people. And may God reward you for the open heart you have and give you a hundred thousand fold return. And as you sow into them, may God see that benefit and benefit your life because of your kind heart. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray. God bless Mother Catherine right now. She blessed your people. So now in turn, open up doors for her. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, come on, y'all. We got to go. Everybody say, Lord, I love you. You died for me and you rose again. I thank you, Father. I forgive everyone that hurt me. I release them. I hold them harmless. Baptize with fire. Give me new tongues. In the name, Lord Jesus, amen. Clap your hands. Now, here's my Father in the name of Jesus. Put your hedge of protection around our people. Cover them, protect them, and keep them. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come nigh their dwelling. In the name, Lord Jesus, we do thank you, Father, and we pray. So be it. Amen. Clap your hands.